so here we've got a, a classical ideate project, an engineering student, an art student, who together added computers to physical objects that they had created, light sensors that respond to sound going up and down the stairwell. So these respond to aud audible? Audible, so if I jump about, oh. the lights will go brighter. If I walk up and down the stairs, the lights will brighten and diminish. It was supposed to be a, a one-off installation as a student project, but everybody loved it so much, we made it a permanent exhibit. Oh, that's great. Hey, I am standing in the middle of the campus of Carnegie Mellon University, or as the locals call it, CMU. On my right is their College of Art. On my left is their College of Engineering. Now that proximity is no accident. This college was founded on the principle of bringing different disciplines together to work and learn from each other. Behind me is their library in the basement of which is a really cool makerspace that's been built for the students to do just that, bring them from different disciplines to work together. So tell me about the philosophy of, of putting this makerspace into a, into a library. So I think libraries have a number of things to offer. Firstly, we are neutral space on territory. What we're trying to do here is provide maker spaces from students, for students from across the university. If we'd put this maker space in any academic building, it would have been seen as that academic unit's turf. Right. An engineering maker space, artists won't feel comfortable. A design maker space, computer scientists won't feel comfortable. Libraries have traditionally been the neutral territory where everybody is welcome, everybody feels invited to come and share the common goods of the institution. The other hook for me is that the library has been the place where for generations people have come to create knowledge, create things. Conventionally that's been by writing on paper or typing on screen. Here we see the next evolution where people are creating knowledge by making tangible objects. They're using a 3D printer or a CNC router to create objects that exhibit their <coughs> learning, their thought processes. The other important hook is that here we're seeing students from every discipline coming together, learning how each other thinks, what each other brings to a problem situation. Now, why is it important that an artist learns how an engineer thinks and an engineer learns how a computer scientist thinks? My answer to that would be that in the 21st century, our students are going to be dealing with big challenges, which no one can solve on their own. And we're looking at multidisciplinary teams being thrown at big problems, whether it's climate change or food quality or creating startup companies to power the economy forward. An engineer will be trained by other engineers to be a great engineer, but they need to know how designers, computer scientists, artists think and what skills they can bring to the problem situation. Working with each other, often in very rapid turnaround problem fixing situations. Here's an assignment, you've got three days to work on it, form your team, learn how to work with each other, build the solution. Turn in your solution, here's the next problem, find a different team power it up, rinse and repeat over and over again. And from what you were telling me earlier today, uh, this idea of bringing multiple disciplines together to work together is baked right into the philosophy of CMU. Absolutely. As we look down the campus, we see a tremendous College of Fine Arts and a tremendous College of Engineering, School of Computer Science. Those represent the way in which Andrew Carnegie conceived of this institution when he founded it. So back in 1900, we had the arts, we had engineering and technology. Over 120 years, those have grown together, really to come at the heart of the creative industries that we recognize powering ahead over the 21st century. We've been doing it for a long time. We've got programs and faculty who are absolutely number one in the world. We're giving our students a tremendous opportunity to benefit from all of the different parts that make this a great university. Now, most of the time we hear about maker spaces, we're hearing about them being put in grade schools and high schools, that uh, there is a possibility that the public perception of maker spaces is that they're for kids to learn about making stuff. Why is a maker space important at a university? Because 
again, we are seeing this idea of helping students to learn to work with each other. We could throw them in a classroom and ask them to write a team report or a team essay. It's much more practical to give them skills of making, and you've then got to learn the skills of working with each other quickly in that environment. It's a, a very tangible process, much more tactile, hands-on, fosters a different way of working together that a conventional team project to write an essay or give a presentation wouldn't in and of itself do. How old is this program here? Uh, two years. So within that two years, are you, I would assume that you're also learning from the students and Absolutely. how they're working together. And we're constantly evolving, iterating. We've got a tremendous business school at Carnegie Mellon where they've got experts in organizational skills and team working skills, work with many of the big tech companies. They're working with our students, learning from them, helping us to evolve the program. We're getting a tremendous amount out of it. We're also learning about the importance of engaging with companies from outside the university who give our students real world problems to work on. So it's not just an abstract theoretical go and build something. It's we've got some returning veterans who need particular adaptations in their home environment. Help us build the solution over the course of a semester. And watching our students react to those problems and give so much back to the community is a tremendously fulfilling part of this whole process. It really, it really is. It's very inspiring. Thank you so much for Thank you very much, Helen. Good to meet you. Thanks.